Okay, we've seen some examples of how to create test cases and how to create tests in a test case. So that gets us started, but really what is a test and how do we determine whether or not a test passes or fails? How do we test a VI or a function? Uh, in order to show that, let's go ahead and open uh, VI Tester in this project and we'll see that it opens the two unit tests that are in the project, test example and test example two. I'm going to go ahead and open test example one here. And we'll see, if we look at the context help for this, that the test passes if the two inputs x and y are equal to each other. And we can run this very quickly and we see that it passes because dog certainly equals cat, or dog. If I set this to cat and then run the test again, we can see that it fails. And it fails because they're not equal. Now, what if we want to flip this around? and say, well, I want the test to fail if they're equal. Well, we have such a function right here. And in fact, we've got an example. Let me uh, quickly change this one back to dog so that it passes. I'll just verify. OK. Uh, I'll open example two, and what we see is that this one calls fail if equal. So this test will fail if x equals y. And we can see that dog does not equal cat. And so the test will pass. If you, if you don't like that inverted logic, you can just use the pass if equal. Uh, there's a lot of other functions that you can call in order to pass or fail your test. If you just want to fail it, uh, you can call fail. You can fail it if uh, the Boolean input is true. Again, there's a pass, which inverts that logic. It'll pass if that Boolean input's true. Pass if equal, fail if equal, pass if error. Uh, this sort of a situation is if you have uh, something you're testing and you want it to generate an error. You can call this function and the test will pass if that error input is, uh, has an error. Now if there is no error on this error input, the test will fail, uh, which, which is what we want in that instance. Uh, you can also skip tests. You can see that in, inside the uh, disabled frame, we're actually skipping the test. If I enable that sub-diagram, now we can see we've disabled the actual test and we're just skipping it. And if I run that again, we can see it shows the little skip glyph. Okay, and then uh, the other function there isn't quite important right now. So anyways, uh, we know how to set up our tests, configure whether they pass or fail programmatically. Uh, have fun!